Hello and welcome back to Trains Railroad Simulator 2019. Thank you very much for joining me in this video and today I'm going to be taking a look at one of the routes that I have been really really looking forward to seeing ever since it was announced when I first saw it when I made my first impressions video a few months ago and that is the East Coast Main Line just the part between Edinburgh and Dundee. So let's read a little bit about this and we'll read about who's made this and uh, what's included on it and then we'll get straight into one of the scenarios over the next uh, probably two episodes, maybe three episodes, it depends on how far I'll stretch it and we'll run the entire East Coast Main Line uh, one way or the other in this section. Of course the East Coast Main Line goes all the way to London King's Cross but not quite yet. That is this one here which I believe is still being worked upon. So this is the Dundee to Edinburgh or Edinburgh to Dundee section. So let's read this through. The Edinburgh Dundee line is a mixture of different routes but generally called here as being part of the East Coast Main Line. This well-known route includes the 4th and Tay Rail Bridges. There was a rail disaster uh, on that bridge, really bad, which means that that has a 20 mile per hour speed restriction, I believe. And the stunning scenery along the Firth of 4th Estuary, which is this one uh, along here. The route is based around the year of 1976, includes the uh, Rosith Navy Dock, just west of the 4th Bridge, where Delta Power ships called Minesweepers were based and overhauled. The route has some good gradients, particularly after this bridge, I'll tell you that now, and some severe speed restrictions. Again, I know one after this bridge. Um, so do keep an eye out for these whilst route learning. I say after this bridge, I just realised it's on this side, the speed restriction. That side's Edinburgh. This side is the other side. I've actually taken a photo from there, I believe, uh, across these two bridges. It's really nice, this place. So I should be able to give you some, some idea of uh, what it's like. So the project leader has been Stuart Page, uh, East Coast Mainline project leader from 2003 to 2018. So maybe he works on this one too. Um, yes, it, it is him. So it looks like uh, they are working on this together. This is just one part of it. Root builders, Michael Carpenter, Andrew Carpenter, and I'm going to apologize early on this one. Uh, Tony Zayakivsky, Zayakivsky, uh, and Stuart Page, who is a uh, Napier Deltic. I believe that's how that's pronounced. And Bruce Galloway as well, as well as all the other content creators that haven't been mentioned who have actually made this route and they've done it all together. So, Obviously, it's been released by N3V, and we've got two Deltic locomotives. Now, we'll talk about the Deltic locomotives once we get uh, on on the actual route. So, this is what we have available to us. We have a quick drive, which I'm not really interested in just yet. We have the one Echo 52 910 from Dundee to King's Cross, and we'll be taking it as far as Edinburgh. Or we've got the one Sierra 77. Uh, 2315 King's Cross to Aberdeen the night capitals um which as you can see is departing Edinburgh at seven o'clock so we're taking that run seven o'clock in the morning we're departing Edinburgh and we're arriving in Dundee at 0838 this one is nine in the morning or ten past nine hence the 910 leaving Dundee and arriving at Edinburgh at 1037 so the one I'm going to take is actually going to be this one and we're going to see how far we can get it does say it's a hard one so this is going to be kind of interesting let's get underway all right so here we are in the in the sim and there's a few things that i need to show you a few things that have actually changed uh, but we're going to be showing them in a little while. The first thing we've got to do is actually back into our consist. As you can see, this consist doesn't actually have a locomotive on it. So we need to back into the consist, which is exactly what we're going to do. Just using the... Oh, okay. Click that for the timings. Lovely. Really liking that. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to... Passengers are boarding. Yeah, but we haven't actually backed into it, so... We're going to actually back into this train first. Because if we don't actually back into the train... There we go, he's guiding us. You're alright, you're alright. A few things to obviously show you is now we've got that up there. There's a, actually a couple of changes that I want to make. If I go to the settings, I've been asked to make a few uh, changes from 
the N3V developers. And one of them is going to be in this and something that says um, free internal camera. Here we go. So this one here. This apparently allows us to move around, which is really kind of neat. So we can go up and down and have a look around, which does actually help us. That really does help us, so that's great. Yep, we're going to keep coming along. Then we've got this over here, which I'm going to have a look at in a bit. Do I keep going? I believe we are coupled. Selected train is not under user control. Why not? I have no idea. Probably waiting. That's what it is. So, in the meantime, let's have a look at anything else. Yeah, it's 909. We need to wait for 910. Let's have a look at other things that are around. So, we've got this over here. Track profile settings. Now, that actually allows us to change things on this here and you're going to see it so we've got animated portraits I'm going to you know you've got that we can get rid of that now I would like to be able to get rid of the driver portrait altogether because I feel like that doesn't actually help us in any which way um, we've got speed signs at ah, due to spot 910 I'm now in control of this train Uh, how do I change cab? No, I want to change direction. No, I want to change direction. How do I change direction? Um, I've coupled, I've done that. Change train direction. How do I change direction? Oh, that's new. Um... don't actually know okay well this is going to be interesting for a moment once I fix this at least it sounds good the horns pretty realistic ah this route this is it reverse the heading of the train there you go so we're going to leave this pretty much now we'll lapse him forward our brakes are released and currently we're in DCC mode so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this mode and I'm actually going to make sure that our brakes everything's released and we're going to help oh, not do that we're going to stop cranking this up and we'll start getting out of here all right so now we can have a look at some of these little bits and bobs that we have so we've got this here and you can see if we zoom in by the way you can zoom in just by scrolling in and out uh, if we just zoom in on this we get to see we've got traffic signals we've got gradients over here you'll see just there we've got gradients so um, that tells us how steep the incline is ideally I will be honest ideally I would prefer to see this in in a ratio as opposed to the percentage I'm more used to seeing these in ratios so I would prefer that uh, driver, driver messages display that's interesting that's actually very interesting very close to this should we listen to this from the outside pretty nice It actually sounds pretty good, actually. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Here comes another train. Another Deltic. Right, your first station call is New Cars in 8 miles. Alright, so, as I said, we've got junctions. So you can see all the junctions come up. We could switch on industries and stations. We can take switch on signals, speed signs, 
triggers. I don't think we need triggers, track marks. I don't think we need the track marks and we've got navigation points. So what I'm going to actually leave is I'm going to leave... Yeah, I think this is pretty good. It's pretty good as we do our short climb up. And I have to say it's performing very well. And just taking a look out, it's, it's actually quite nice. So now if we just zoom out a little bit. There we go. We get to see an entire section. Um, that, I think, is the bridge there. Yeah, I think that that bit there is the bridge. And then that's once we've got past the bridge right there. That goes up to 65 on the other side of the bridge. And that's the bridge right there. You can see it in all its glory. And uh, what was it to hide this again? Yeah, F5. There is a little bit of lag, um, nothing too too major, nothing too major at all, but it does look pretty good. The King's Own Scottish Borderer, number 55010 is what we're using today. And that's the Tay Bridge that goes over the Firth of Tay. Is an aircraft coming in to land at Dundee Airport or just I'm not quite sure what it's doing anyway we're not here to we're not here to look at aircraft this isn't a flight sim this is a train sim all right 35 is oh don't do that I keep pressing the wrong key I don't know how to release the brakes no oh I think it might be Q Okay, as I said, this is my first look at this. I've not actually driven a Deltic in a very, very long time. Anything else in this that works? Let's uh, use this free camera to our advantage. Also, I do wish we could make the HUD smaller. I know we can get... Ooh, that's not it. I know we can get rid of the track profile. I would like to make this HUD smaller. I suppose... What's the bell? I don't know. I suppose I could do that to get rid of some stuff. And obviously I am in the realistic mode. You've got you've got basic mode, realistic mode, and then you've got the AI mode. Um, I've never used the AI mode because I've never had to. I might try it at some point, and obviously I've used the basic mode, and changing through them is just pressing these, these different buttons. All right, up we go. 35 miles an hour. I thought it was 20 across this bridge. And in all honesty, I thought this bridge had a overhead. I thought there was a lot more overhead on this from about there. Ah, I might be wrong. As I said, it's been such a long time. But, I mean, that is... The water looks remarkably good. And look at the reflections there on the water. That's one of the biggest changes I feel from from the old trains, from the old old trains titles. That water reflection is beautiful. It really is, it, and it brings a whole new dimension. That just makes it look so much nicer. Okay. Let's see if there's any other potential photographs we can take as I, I could go to free camera but I'm not going to just yet um, the one place you don't want to be speeding is on this bridge just get that there we go Okay. That's not bad. Uh, in fact, no, I am going to hit the brakes a little bit more. Come on. There we go. I'm not sure how to actually release the brakes one step at a time. 
So there is that that I need to worry about. That there is the handbrake, of course. Uh, that's our hot plate. So that seems to work. A little bit of flickering here and there. Got demisters, cab heaters. Doesn't work on this side, just on that side. Anything else that we need to have a look at? Overcharge button, that's our throttle, that's our reverser, that's our brakes, that's our straight brake or independent brake. Our lights should be here, here we go. Root lights, cab lights, instrument lights. Uh, I think anything lit up. Oh, honesty. Oh, that's lit up at the front. Uh, I am speeding once again. Which isn't great, I'll be honest. Alright, time to crank this up in a few seconds. So as you can see, there is there is a lot that can be done here. What are we looking for? 9.24. What's our current time? 9.19. Nope, nope, switch that off. Um, maximum power. Oh, that was a little jolt on the on the sound. Which is actually really quite nice. Probably a that's probably a better view for me. Like that. Now, I don't know how this train breaks, so this is going to be interesting. Stopping at our first station. And uh, how far is our first station? That's a question. Uh, oh boy. That's a four mile marker. So five, six, seven, eight. Okay. I don't know what this is. X, Y, Z, Y, P. That's coordinates. That's some sort of coordinate system. But it's really nice, and I'm really, really, you know, I'm happy that we've got something like this. The the, the rails are great. The the grass is looking good. This looks great, this looks great, the fields look realistic, the roads look good. It's well done, it's well thought up, it's it's just a really, really good DLC so far. Well, it's not even a DLC, it's part of the it's part of TRS. Just get that slowed down just a smart uh, just a tad. Come on. Come on, get it down. There we go. I think I understand how it works. I think. He says probably getting it very wrong. We'll start slowing this um, train down. Oh, look, cows. Are they animated? No, I don't think... Okay. There you go. I think we'll probably start slowing this train down at that signal there. That's probably a good place to to actually slow this train down. But for now we're going to keep going. Now let's uh, zoom in just a little bit on this so that we can see it a little bit better. If we do that, does it... Well, I suppose if we see a few miles ahead of us... Oops. Yeah, four miles ahead is maybe not something we need to see. Three miles ahead, maybe. This is again about four miles ahead. How about that? That's probably better. I wish the uh, flickering texture would would go away. 
Oh, wipers, do they? Uh, I don't know. Signal's gone to Amber. Haven't got any of that. What are we supposed to be? 9.24. It's 9.23 currently. We are late. That's because we had a slow... We had a, a slow start and we have slowed down somewhat. And we, we did have a slow start. I'm going to say I just don't know this train so well. Um, the footplate doesn't seem to do anything. At the moment, that is. Oh, we've got a 30 coming up there. And we've got some signals here. And that's our, that's our stopping point. There's the signal. Now, I haven't seen a Morpeth board, but I, I think this is before Morpeth boards. So I'm actually going to start applying brakes very gently. I think lapping it, is that what? I think lapping it is the right thing to do here. Oh, I think that's too early. That's too early to be applying the brakes. Yep, that was way too early. About half a mile too early, it seems. It's okay, we're learning. We're definitely, definitely learning. Alright, so we've got a signal there. We've got a 30 coming up where? Around this corner, I guess. There is a 30 coming up around this corner. There it is. There's the 30. So we just bring that down to 30 now. There we go. That's our platform. Now with that, I think we should probably continue slowing down. Is that a 40... 40 Seven. Waiting. I don't know. We'll check when we stop at the platform. Okay, that's uh, not gone completely to plan. We're slowing down a little bit too fast. Still learning, still learning. What's our brake pipe pressure like? We can probably... There we go, that should slow us down. There comes our brake pipe pressure. Still increasing it. 12. 11. 10. 9. 8. I think that should be about right. Now we're looking. Let's have a look at the back of it. You were late in school, zero. Yeah, I know. How do I get to the back? Can I not have a look at the back of the... Back of the train is on the platform. Right, before we get control of the train, I want to have a look at this one. That's not a 40 yet. Yeah, it's class 26. I was going to say that's not a 40. It's too short. It's class 26. Right. Uh, back in the train. What's our next stop? 52, Kirkaldy. How are we going to get to Kirkaldy at... F oh. That's a half an hour journey. I feel like we're really going to have to crank this out of here. You know what? Let's go for it. Clag. Let's see if we can hear it. That is maximum, isn't it? Why can't I go?
Why can't I go? Now I'm just making lots of smoke. No, now all I'm doing is making lots of smoke. Let's do that. Let's just see. I have a feeling I know what it was. I didn't wait for the whistle. I just went when it was. Or I didn't wait for the guard. Maybe. Come on, just get us moving. There we go, we're now moving. Right. Bold is stuck. Now let's go. Clag. Or is it just wheel slip? I don't think it's wheel slip. It's his wheel slip. It genuinely is wheel slip. It can't take that. That's that's well done. Alright, what can it take? What can it take? You can take three. Can you take four? Bolt is stuck. Again. Can you take six? Uh, no, we've got wheel slip there. I think it takes five. Yeah, it's got five. That's cool. It's a good test there. Oh, that looks very close. Yeah, we definitely clipped through that. That was a bit tight. Next call is in 33 miles. So what I might do is I might split this into a second part. So first part, we've had a look at part of the route, and admittedly it looks it looks really nice. Um, yeah, if I had any criticisms, I would say that the locomotive still looks a bit plain. If that makes any any sense to anybody, I can't I can't see any reflections on it. It just looks like a, a matte locomotive. Um, a bit dated, a bit old. Same with the carriages, same thing. Whilst everything else looks like it's got better, so everything else has got a lot better, the locomotives, if you look at that, you will see that the locomotive sort of looks out of place now because it seems to have old mapping, old textures. So if they were to improve upon that, I think it would look remarkable. It genuinely would look remarkable. This looks like it's got a, like I said, a matte paint or even better, what's happened? Someone's applied paint to it and then sandblasted it. So it looks like it's got, it's incredibly rough. It's got no reflective capabilities. Uh, the normal, the light is bouncing and because of the, the way it's bouncing, it's got nothing that's showing us uh, any, any glimmer of reflections or any glimmer of refractions through glass or anything like that. You can see the glass kind of just looks like plastic. If they could make that reflective, maybe, that would be really nice. Forget refraction, that's probably going a little bit too far. But um, if they could make that look reflective, that would be awesome. Crank it right up to maximum. Also, please make that horn louder. I've heard these horns in real life. They are loud. And... Another thing, two-tone horns would be awesome. So not that we just press H and it does that, or we hold it for a bit and and it does that. I would rather be able to get both of them. Just do it sort of like uh, other train simulators. Press two keys. Press two keys for it. One for high, one for low. That would be awesome. That really would be awesome. Alright, so we've got... Uh, a long way to go and I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, end this video here it's been about half an hour or thereabouts 
So I'm going to end this video here and what we'll do is next time um, in the next video we're going to continue looking at this route and we'll see just uh, just what's available and how good it looks. I mean this so far looks really good. I want to see more, I want to do the whole route so make sure you stay tuned for the next episode where we do that. Uh, thank you very much for watching, please remember to hit the like button if you like this video, subscribe to the channel for more videos on Trains Railroad Simulator 2019, that looks really good. Uh, release is very, very soon I believe, uh, I say that with a trademark, you know what um, developers are like, they say soon, you never know what soon means, it could be tomorrow, it could be next week, it could be in a few weeks, but soon is soon. Don't forget to support me on Patreon, www.patreon.com slash ecgadget. Your support would be massively, massively appreciated. It would really, really help me out. Um, also, you can find me on Twitch, www.twitch.tv slash ecgadget. And you can find me on social media at ecgadgetlp for both Twitter and Instagram. That's all from me, and I'll see you guys next time where we continue along the East Coast Main Line hurtling towards Dun uh, hurtling towards Edinburgh sorry in trains railroad simulator 2019 I'll see you guys then <laughs>